Hi everyone and welcome to Dig the Podcast. I am so flipping excited to bring you all the most amazing guests over the next few weeks and months. We're living in tough times and sometimes we need to switch off and listen to other people's stories and other people's experiences of life and of business. And that's exactly what I hope to bring you with Dig the Podcast. So I hope you're sitting comfy. You know I like to talk. Let's dive in today with our next guest. So honoured to have Sandra Deveni on the podcast um, today. And Sandra is the Sales and Business Development Manager at McElhinney's Body Buffet, Donegal. Now, I have always looked up looked at McElhenney's um, with great admiration, probably because of my history in retail. But for anybody that doesn't know who McElhenney's is, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about them just so you can get an idea as to why I had to have someone on the team on the podcast. Um, So McElhenney's was founded in 1971 by John McElhenney. And John still works there to this day. And um, I suppose I was very drawn to the story because of the way it all started off. And John used to deliver like home essentials and his little Dodge van all around um, Donegal to the local community. And um, yeah, he was always about the customer experience and the customer service. And then fast forward to 2021 and we are now looking at one of the biggest department stores in Ireland. Outside of Dublin, it is the biggest department store in Ireland and it is it employs over 200 staff and um, it's all about and still is about the customer experience. And um, that makes me excited just because of retail and because I've always loved it. I am like, yes, that's definitely what it should be about. So when I reached out to the team at Michael Henney's, I was so pleased that Sandra came on because Sandra um, has worked at Michael Henney's for almost seven years. So she knows the crack. She knows what's going on and her role is crucial to the whole thing staying and running in the in the well-oiled machine that it is. So Sandra has won many awards, but her most recent one, she was awarded Irish Manager of the Year at the Retail Excellence Awards. And she beat off stiff competition from um, lots of very um, exclusive independent boutiques. So she is the top of her game and unreal that I have her here today. And whenever I asked Sandra, what her goal was for McElhinney's and she said to me that she wanted to future proof the business and I was like oh my god how do you do that do we really want to know how you do that and um, she does it through her Accelerate leadership program so I want to hear all about that today and I'm sure everyone that's listening that's in business and in retail will be like sucking in this information so hello Sandra how are you? Hello Caroline thank you so much for having me it's me that's honoured actually Oh no, stop, no, no, oh, definitely no, me. No, <laughs> indeed. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on. And I know I've given an introduction there and all, but that's just my words. And, you know, you're the woman that's there. You're the woman that lives and breathes it. So can you tell me just a little bit about, um, well, I suppose I've said about McElhinney's, but have I missed anything there about the background? And then just a wee bit about you and your background and how you came mm-hmm. to work in McElhinney's. Yeah, well, I know you you um you said exactly everything right. And um I think our biggest the biggest is obviously we're in our 50th year. We just came into it there at the beginning, um sort of as, as the year went out. We're just um in its infancy and just going into it in a lockdown obviously brings um it's not the way we hoped, however, that's you know, that's by the by. But no, um obviously John is the CEO, he is the founder of the business. He um, has just set up the most amazing business with so much um, um, brilliant values that sort of transcends down to every single one of us. Um, I um, live in Donegal, so I my family's all from Donegal. So obviously McElhenney's was that go-to place. And we hear this story every day. You've got your communion dress, you got your confirmation dress. And um, then, you know, I lived in England and I actually got my wedding dress and I wanted to buy it on McElhenney's. So um, then uh, obviously my background, believe it or not, I am. I was a long haul stewardess for years oh. and then I moved back to Ireland and got into you know I was very much into seals even with the airline however that became my passion um and I realized gosh I'm really seals just gives me something that you know nothing else seems to be able to do so um I got into seals and then I started working with a lot with a cosmetics company 
and really grew um sort of got a real in-depth um feel for um obviously the the background with customer service on, on an airline and then the sales with that um and I worked, as I say, for several years with this cosmetics company, and I ended up um, becoming a, a, an area manager for them, looking after um, a good part of the Republic of Ireland. Um, and I got a, there was a lot of learnings from that. Good, mostly good, I have to say. But it also really, really cemented my knowledge for the power of excellent customer service, how you treat your staff and how you get the best from your staff. And also that um, it also learned me an awful lot about myself as well and what um, how my strengths can play to that as well. So, um, yeah, I joined McAhoney seven years ago. I actually went in as a business manager for women's wear. And then very quickly, you know, I loved I just loved it from the minute I got there. I just felt like everything in my life got was to make me arrive here at this point um all my learnings all my experience brought me sort of to 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 McElhenney's that's I felt that very quickly I felt that within weeks of arriving in there that this is where exactly where I'm meant to be and then um I then obviously then John approached me about taking over the bridal department which obviously is very well known and anybody out there who's in the bridal business knows it's although it seems the most beautiful job in the world but that is a lot of challenges and it's a very highly charged emotion um emotional environment and you know so I took on the woman's wear manager role and the bridal role and very quickly again um then he asked me to come on and join the senior team and took on the role of business manager and sales manager so that's so where I am that was five years ago now this is where I am today so yeah, that's kind of how how I got here. So he saw something special and he's put you at the top of the, the, the pyramid then. That's fantastic. And what what is the role of a sales and business manager? You know, what there'll be people listening and, and me too, like I don't even know, wouldn't even know where to start, but what is your role? Okay, so I report directly to John, the CEO, and Martin is the general manager, who's John's son. So Martin Michael Honey. Um, and my role basically is... Um, the, the team report to me. So I um, build almost, I in, build a long-term strategy. I forecast risks and I seek out opportunity for the business as a whole. And with that, then I put in plans with the, with the, with the staff and the team to ensure that we're all working towards the same goal. Um, I work obviously very closely with the marketing team. We're an omni-channel retailer now more than ever. You know, um, online is obviously huge for us as we speak. But all that um, sort of comes from, you know, sort of seeking out to say the opportunities is going to align our business and, and I have to adapt that into the current business model and then forecast those risks and being able to eliminate them before they come and support the team and making sure that they don't um, risk our business. Right, okay. So that's, you make it sound like it's not a lot, but it's, that's a lot <laughs> going on. Um, but what what does a typical day look like for you? I know we're now in the thick of COVID and you're closed, but before you were closed, what would a typical day be for you mm-hmm. in your job? Okay, well, the managers, well, the department managers would always meet with me every single morning. So the first thing that we would have done, we would do, would be we have a meeting, a 10 minute brief at most. We never sit down for it. It's always a stand up meeting and it's just about sort of going through the opportunities for the day um, and talking about the successes maybe and any challenges from the previous day or any, again, you know, come back to, is there anything that's going to obviously affect our objectives for the day ahead or in the short term for the week ahead? Then they go obviously go out to their departments. And then there, I would review. Did I get, sorry, sorry. but did I get that right? How many departments is there? Well, there's 13 departments and then we obviously have our marketing, we have our online, we have okay. our store, our warehouse of goods in. So all those department managers, we all come together and have this huddle every single morning. Wow. And like, is that a huddle as in, as in, 
uh, do you actually like troubleshoot and problem solve during that or is that just like an update from everybody and then you head off what way does that work mm-hmm. well it's really important that um it doesn't get into that because every monday the managers will have their business strategy meeting with me and that's very much about troubleshooting the week ahead the huddle is very much about getting the day set up successfully and ensuring that everybody knows exactly where they need to be for that day and what we need out of the day um you know it was something that i was very strong i felt very strongly about from the beginning was making sure that these meetings don't become meetings upon meetings mm-hmm. um you know and the very much very much a huddle is just something where you're just catching up setting everybody up for success and then everybody goes out and sets their own teams up i love that and you know i think that that's obviously why you are in your role because as a small business owner when i had my shop and I, the staff members grew. So uh, just in March, there was like five, six at a time, the part-time girl came in, uh, members of staff. And that's something that I struggled with, that like getting everybody together to like motivate them for the day. Because there was so much else going on that you were pulled mm-hmm. between. But the fact that your role is on, and it, it shows then in the way the whole place is ran all day. Everybody's on the same kind of goal. Same path, yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, and what about now? So, so now they're flipping places closed. Right. I can't believe it. But what I know, what goes I on know. now? Is that is that a virtual huddle we're talking about? Um, well, to be honest, because the three different lockdowns have been so different. Um, the first lockdown, there was a very small team, and the second lockdown, we had nearly all the managers in because we were just coming up to Christmas. Obviously, our lockdown went on longer than the one in the north, um, and we needed the team in. Now, this lockdown, again, is, again, very small. So we have a very small team in. But the managers, um, so at the moment, they're all off. There's just a handful of us in. The web team are all in. The marketing team are all in. And then there's a few of us. And, again, um, our objectives just flipped overnight, really, didn't they? Um, Our objectives now went from pushing our omni-channel, which is bricks and mortar and online, to really the you know, 90% of our business is coming now from online. Our online has grown exponentially, you know, from lockdown. Um, And that was something that we had to literally adapt to very quickly and overnight. Um, And another thing that has went very, very well for us um, is our virtual shopping and our customer service um, over the phone sales. So effectively, you're click and collect. Um, and then being able to shop, obviously, for customers who maybe weren't used to Zoom or used to selling on WhatsApp or not even maybe knowing what WhatsApp is. So our team then moved in and they supported the customer through that. Um, And that went so well for us. And just even up to Christmas, you know, we went from, you know, people coming in with lists to virtual lists and they were emailing and there were Christmas lists and you just you just adapt and you have to adapt or you'll be left behind um but But was that a conscious decision that you guys made right let's do like a virtual shopping experience for them where we would take what their list and go get it and is that that you decided on that as a strategy or did that just kind of happen without you even really well no i think um you know very right away we're always thinking about again back to that opportunity let's think outside the box Mm -hmm. let's stop thinking what we can do let's you know we always say to the team blue sky thinking no idea is a bad idea someone will come up with an idea and we'll be like you know what we love that and then someone else will come up with something else to make that work and that's the beauty of our team you know there's nothing um that is a bad idea and it might not be used at the moment but we will use it again mm-hmm. um and again as i say it's not just me that has these ideas this is the whole team from from right through the board. You know, we would have a lot of the sales staff emailing your messaging your ideas or what about this? And I mean, we embrace that because mm-hmm. they're on the floor. They know the customer better than any of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's been the secret to John's success to now is that he's listened to, and he's talked to his staff and he listens to them and he cares what they, what they, what they say. So I think that, you know, um, when, when back to your question was about the virtual shopping right away we all knew that right we've got to think outside the box they're not able to come just so how can we get to them and the virtual shopping was was like a no-brainer and and I'm glad to see other businesses jumped on board very quickly after that because 
there's no other way of, of around it. You know, you had to. And um, so it was very, it's very successful for us. And even now, today, we had three customers ringing in and booking their virtual shopping mother the bride appointments for two days time. And, you know, no, it's it's been very good for us and something that will we'll keep you know, even when we reopen again. So how does that work? Like a mother of the bride virtual shop? And just tell me, like, I don't obviously don't want to steal all the ideas. No, you're fine. But, but I'm wondering, do you know what? what do you do? Do you video, do you do videos of all the different outfits or? So um, it's exactly the same, Caroline, as an in-store. If we were doing a personal um, shopping appointment, our experts will ring the customer and find out just exactly, just do a questionnaire, what they like, what they dislike you know, any brands that they particularly like, maybe they've been Mother of the Bride or Mother of the Grim in the past, what brands did they wear? Um, so you're just sort of gathering as much information and then they get their sizes and um, et cetera. And we, we ask them to send through a picture just for colors and, and ideas like that. And then they will go and pick about um, a selection of outfits um, because the, 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 the customers come to us for their advice. So we very much are using that as a right, you're coming to us, so we're going to tell you what we think based on the knowledge that we have. And then they build up a rapport with the customer and the customer really, really trusts what they say. And, you know, one of our values is, um, you know, act honestly and with respect and we'll never lie to a customer. If it's not right, it's not right. We're going to tell you, no, that's not right for you. Oh my God, that's Um, so important, isn't it? Oh, to- totally. You know, you, you're caught out very quickly, I think, with that. So, yeah, it's um, and then, you know, we obviously some of the um, the older customers need a little bit of support from maybe their daughters or their daughters in law with Zoom or um, a lot of them are doing it on WhatsApp, I have to say. Um, but quite a few, we've had a few on Zoom, as I say, the ones today, um, one of them wanted Zoom. But um, yeah, and that's how it's worked. And, you know, we've we've actually had. Believe it or not, we just we were talking about this last week. We we don't get any returns on this. You know, they keep the outfit. They love it. So it's 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 got a really good success rate. And we're delighted about that. That's flipping amazing, especially for Mother of the Bride. It's right. really high end item, like costs a lot of money. Like yeah. that is, that's, that's a success story in itself. That's flipping brilliant. Yeah. No, it is. It's brilliant, I have to say. And as I say, it doesn't just Mother of the Bride. You could even get you know, mums that are going back to work or, you know, people that maybe don't feel comfortable leaving the house and they just want something to, you know, a new outfit, a new winter, you know, something to wear at home or lounge wear or whatever. It can be, listen, it could be anything. Mm-hmm. And, and, do, and we're happy to help. Do the people, is there like a system set up online for this or do people just ring the store for that service? Do they email in? Is it all of the above? Mm-hmm. Well, prior to lockdown, we would have had it online, but we took it off online because simply just to deactivate it because the information that was on there was was no longer accurate because um, the customer was coming in. So at the moment, we're just asking the customer to ring in or email in to the customer service line or ring in and we just take over from there. Unreal. I need to get on that line and get a new loungewear set, I think. <laughs> Um, that's, that's, it's just so lovely to hear that because look, I more than anyone know how whenever something like this hits, it can just be complete overwhelm and you can't see any way out of the fog that's ahead of you in detail on COVID and to hear that you as a team changed like and pivoted like that, it's actually, it's heartwarming and and it'll give other business owners, you know, hope listening, God, you know, they did that, we're going to try. So there's a lot of inspiration to be got from hearing story like yours. So thank you so much for sharing it with us all. And, you know, I've written here, not at all. I've written here, how the hell do you manage so many staff, like over 200 and (laughs) like no matter, I'm sure how brilliant they all are, that's a lot of people, no matter what's going on to manage. So do you have any like strategy for doing that or what way, what way do you handle that on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it's it's a bed of roses, um, but the funny thing about Michael Hanes, and I've often been asked this when I go to events or whatever to represent the company, they'd always say, you know, how do you get your staff 
to be so devoted to the customer and that. And, and I think that's a really big part of our recruitment process as well. You know, we recruit, we, we feel like we have a DNA with our employees and our, that DNA is very apparent very quickly. So, and it's rare for me to say that for someone that maybe is a stranger and doesn't know Michael Honey's, but there's fibers of them that we know, right? This is us. This is Michael Honey's. And I always say very quickly when someone joins Michael Honey's, very quickly, they will realize that they're either totally suitable for us or they'll realize that they're not and you know that that makes life easier because very very quickly we're all fish swimming in the same direction um and you know you you've the majority then all working together um and I think because again back to John he's such a true humble leader he is so honest and kind and good And um, I think that that runs through all of us. I mean, obviously, yes, there's probably many times where staff don't, days are probably going home and I hate her or whatever. But, you know, at the end of the day, I really, truly believe that these are my work family and I care about every single one of them. And, you know, even now, so much of my headspace is taken up with the fact that the majority of them are sitting at home and they're not at home, they're not with us and that makes me sad but we're working really hard and we know that what's coming is going to be really good so um you know they they're pretty they're really really good bunch we have a very very low um sickness rate with a very high retention our team stay with us for forever you know we've we've an employee there who's there from day one with John um wow. a lot of employees have 20 30 years service um and we've because of the um accelerated leadership program we've sort of we've got more and more people that really want to work with us because they feel that there's a development plan in place and we're tell me about that tell me about that tell me what that is Tell me what that is, that program, just now when you've mentioned it. Yeah, so this was a sort of an idea, you know, one time last year, maybe, I I had my own meetings with um, John and Martin, and I was like, you know what, I just asked them questions as well, and I realized that the biggest part of this is making sure that we... um, that this business survives, it's, you know, the next generation and that the same effort is put in. And I realized, you know, and we all realized that our people are everything. We know this. Our people are McElhenney's. It's not John. It's not Martin. It's not me. It's the team that's on the floor that have built this business to where it is. And that's that's a given um, because of their love for customers. So how do I harness that and make sure that when we're all gone, that those values and um that those that they're still living and breathing um, when we're not. Um, so you know, I realized that we have to recruit the future. We have to keep them, and we have to teach them and impart everything that we know to them. So we, I came up with the idea then of the accelerated leadership program, and basically it was so it was just something I thought. Well, um, I already knew there was a few trailblazers in there, and I already knew. And I was thinking this this one here is going to someday do my job or so immediately then I always say with any development, you should never approach people. You need to, they need to want this. So we put it out to all the team and um, quite a lot of people, you know, we were delighted with the response. So we whittled it right down then to the first intake. And that was um last march and there was you know when they went we put them through their paces it was like a five-stage process and um so we have five active recruits now on it um we're slightly behind we wanted the second intake to be in january but because of lockdown obviously that has um you know put pushed that back but it's certainly it's it's it will happen um once we get opened again um but these guys are we're working with the local college and they're doing a leadership um study in guilds they are exposed to all aspects of the business they get an hour every week or uh, three hours with me every week and we are literally taking the business from the bottom up 
Um, when buying season, you know, when we start traveling, our buyers get back out because obviously their buying is all virtual at the moment. You know, um, so we're, we're, they're just basically going through every part of the process and we are exposing them to all of it. So whatever day when it comes, they will know how to do everything not just marketing or not just the, you know, the web, not just, you know, the uh, be a department manager, but they will have exposure to all of it. That's amazing. Um, so that's, that's where it came from. And the, the growth in these five individuals is just, it's just amazing. You know, they've just grown, they will agree overnight, but just the people that they were last January to the people that they are today. I mean, they could, so, some of them could do the job now, you know, mm-hmm. but I always said it's a three year program. Um, I'm not, you know, I, 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 we have to make sure that they see all the business. So, mm-hmm. but they're fantastic. That is um, So yeah, the future is very bright for us. So I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors of the podcast and that is B&L Productions. I have been so busy over the past few years and when I've needed to make digital things happen, it's B&L Productions that I have always put my trust in. Like I think of these guys as a one-stop shop for all things events, live and film. The team have worked with me on so many things, the social media content when I owned my shop. They provided everything like from scripting, casting, storyboards, multitude of cameras, lighting, sound, editing, all the things that as a business owner aren't my expertise. And they also supported us in the Northern Ireland Social Media Awards that I'm the co-founder of. Like that night took my breath away. The lights, the PA, the camera feeds, the huge LED wall. I will never forget it. Like if it's a live streaming um, conferences for your work or or whatever your project is, like they bring all the kit, the microphones, the screens, they produce high-end TV ads, custom animations. They're just, they sort everything out in a hassle-free way. And like I've called them up with all my crazy ideas over the years. And do you know what? No idea is too big or too small or too ambitious. That's what I've learned about the team at b Productions. So if you are thinking of commissioning some new marketing videos or online content, I hand on heart recommend my friends at b and Productions. I know they will look after you. Um, so I just want to thank them for being the sponsor. In fact, they're even editing this podcast because that is not my expertise at all. So thanks a million, b and And if you want to check out their socials, it's b and Productions or visit their website at b and um, I can see why the team stays so long whenever you offer them opportunities like that. Like it doesn't come around in every job you go to. So um, it's really something. But can I ask you what has been the biggest change in the retail setting since you worked at McElhinney's? You know, what have you seen as the biggest change? Uh-huh. Okay. I mean, there's been obviously standout moments like, you know, obviously now and the, and Brexit, you know, the preparation for Brexit. But I think something that was very tangible and it probably a lot of your listeners would be interested is the, the, the change in the bridal business. Um, you know, as I say, when I took on bridal, you know, it was a bride I think the revolution of these say yes to the dress and all these bridal programs really give our poor brides a real misconception of what's out there so not only did it put pressure on a huge amount of pressure on them it also put a lot of pressure on the the bridal shops and stockists but I also think the whole um you know the double-edged sword that is social media it's just the pressures on them is just unbelievable Mm-hmm. And um, I feel I really do feel for them. I feel for them, and then obviously this on top of it, the poor brides. I mean, they're they've just been through. I really do feel for them. I have to say, and we all do. Or, or and we've had to adapt our trainings of our bridal team to to dealing with this. You know, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I, I think like that was a um, counselor nearly to them now because their weddings are exactly. you have to deal with the emotions and I'm sure it's not easy. Do you know what? I have to say, Caroline, they have been amazing. Um, we thought this was just going to be the biggest, the hardest part of the lockdown was was the poor brides. But I don't know whether they've dealt with all of it before they get to us, but they're very, 
they're actually almost more in control now than maybe you know <laughs> prior to this yeah. because this con- this has been taken out of their hands you know mm-hmm. it's not something that they can control anymore mm-hmm. but um yeah i think a big that has been a massive and that obviously reflects on mother the bride and you know mother the groom and guests guess what they wear to weddings and all that so yeah the bridal business has been a massive change for me for all of us we all seen it and we talk about it in depth and as I said we had to adapt our business model to that as well mm-hmm. um and then I've also written down here and I know there's going to be so many people interested to know about this but talk to me about influencer marketing and how Michael Hennies have embraced that as a strategy because um, anybody that does follow you guys or follows some of the influencers will have seen your name pop up on different people's stories continually with some people. So tell me about your influencer marketing strategy and how that has worked for you guys. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so the influencer strategy, I mean, we're very clear in who, you know, we work with. You know, it's it's such a big part of our marketing strategy that we've actually got um a person in place that manages that solely Um, and she deals directly with all our influencers and all our anybody who we're working in collaboration with or whatever Um, there is absolutely no denying that it works Um, and as I say when we when we do look at our influencers or we look at who we we are going to align ourselves with we look we do a lot of our own research on them um, and they obviously you know, we, we, you will probably, for those who, who do know who we work with, you know, a lot of our, our um, influencers are actually have or are business owners for a few reasons. One of it is the commercial acumen that they have. You know, they have a really good understanding of the commercial angle that obviously it's a two-way partnership. We, we're, we're, you know, break it all down, break it, take everything away. We want we're we're recruit, or we're taking this person on to to sell product and sell our brand, um, and this person obviously you know is 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 um, knows that so um, th- that in itself so we are very particular who we we work with. Um, we obviously you know we we're very mindful that they're going to have followers that 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 are potentially going to become more followers and again that's very attractive to us um and you know i'm being straight up here i'm not because i know there's a lot of people interested in this um and i think that you know you have to be very careful um who you deal with because as we know influencers are get a very hard time out there at the moment we have to rem- as a business we have to remove ourselves for them because from that because we have a lot of followers, we have a lot of people who maybe love an influencer and equally that person could have a lot of people who don't like them. And as we know, there's a lot of keyboard warriors and we know there's a lot of people who get emails in about things, but we have to, as a business, remove ourselves from that. You know, we have, we build a lovely relationship with our influencers and it's about this person and us. It's not about anything else. And right away we'll pick up whether this person is someone and they become a friend to us. So regardless of what everyone else is saying or feeling or doing or whatever about them, we keep going back to this person, this person. Um, and they will not be working with us unless we know the real person and someone that we really truly believe in. And we know that is a very good person. And, you know, definitely it is, it is, and it you know we got in there very early with the influencers. Um, we we work, you know, we we're constantly, as I say, Sarah, who is our um, who manages all the influencers. She spends an awful lot of time researching, and you know, the power of micro bloggers as well. We really do want to support them and be able to you know give to to work with them because you know they they could up someday be the big deal you know they could be they could eventually be the you know the Suzanne Jackson or whoever but um yeah they as I say they are back to your question Karen sorry I'm going off on a tangent as usual but um I could talk all day about this because it's something that I believe you know I have very you know strong feelings on but I think that you know there is people behind these all this and um 
you know, they're, they're good people and they're just trying to make money and make a living and they make, they work for us. Mm -hmm. They, um, they're a very big part of our current strategy. They will be a very big part of our future strategy. Um, and you know, I would absolutely recommend to anybody out there who's thinking of it is do your research, make sure they sit with your values and, and go for it. I Sorry, agree. a very long one to answer. Oh, oh, I agree. <laughs> and, you know, like you said, influencers get a bad uh, rap sometimes from people. But at the end of the day, what you've just said, and, and me as a business owner and also someone who uses my platform um, and, uh, you know, that to have influence over my audience, I see how powerful it can be. It can actually change lives. It can change someone's business around if they work with the right person. It can create things for people it's 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 the most amazing tool if it's used right like you say and you do the proper research and you care about the person that you're collaborating with like you just said and when the, all those things come together magic happens and I I have uh, experiences okay. of it and examples of it and so do you so I think if there's anyone listening any business owners who are afraid of it and um, don't don't be, there will be times you will get burned, but you get burned in everything that you do. And I think you should really test, test the water, see what works. You'll mm-hmm. find people you like, people you don't, but there'll be that hidden gem that just makes things happen for you and you'll be glad you invested. So I agree totally. Um, and then I've, I'm and kind sort of, of, sorry, I just want yeah. to say there too, just sorry, just to interrupt there. But I think if there's anybody listening is don't be afraid to take risks. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, and that's that feeling and you're like, well, I won't, I will, I won't, I go for it because you only make that risk once. Um, if you don't make risks, you're never going to grow, you know, mm-hmm. and um, Mr. McElhaney's obviously taken so many risks and some of them work, some of them don't, but we're always taking risks. Some of them don't work, some of them do. Um, but just my advice out there to anyone listening as a business owner, get out there and try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You'll, you'll know, you'll learn very quickly what doesn't work you will you definitely will and and I like you have been burned loads of times but you flip and don't go back in the same fire again you start a new one and hope you don't get burned Um, I um, I don't want to like you know I, I know everyone uh, kind of likes to take the nuggets from each point so I don't want to you know uh, continue talking about influencer marketing but just to say that I always feel that Michael Hennies is represented really well by all the influencers that they work with and it, it gives everyone a very good idea of the strong family team that you have there so I just want to say that from what I've seen and then um, I'm right here what advice would you give to staff in the retail setting right now who are feeling completely deflated with COVID and being closed Mm -hmm. and maybe worried about their job or worried about what kind of space they're going to be going back into how do you speak to your staff right now and what advice would you have for either business owners that are listening and and staff of in a retail setting I know that's a bit of a generalized uh, question but have you got any kind Mm -hmm. of words of wisdom for them or encouragement you seem like a very motivational person so we need somebody to lift us right now (laughs) Look, at, um, I think the biggest, the first thing I'm going to say is always lead from the front. You know, always make sure that your voice is the one, you know, if they're going to be listening to that voice, then it needs to be, um, you know, you need to be very careful what you say. And for us, it's very much, it's a positive voice. Um, this too shall pass. It will, you know, and um, if you asked anybody, and I think a lot of people ask, what was, you know, was there anything good came out of 2020? There was. Everybody had something good to say. Um, we interviewed Mr. McElhenney just at the end of the year there for our 50th um, for this year. And he just came up with a nugget of gold. And I'm just going to share it with you. Um, he said at the end of the Spanish flu, you went into the 1920s and they became the roaring 20s. Oh my God, I'm so actually getting shivers. That's so gives true. me so, the minute I heard that, I just fizzed and I was like, oh my goodness, you're so right. All the way through last year, I just had a feeling in my stomach that things were going to be amazing ahead of this. Yes, we have to get through it. Yes, this is rubbish. Yes, it makes my heart sore to think of our beautiful staff at home, but they are also 
resting. You know, I says, rest, get your, you know, be with your family. You're never going to get this time with your family again. You're never going to be able to read books and have this again. You'll never have Christmas, the year, the, the after Christmas off again. Um, we're very lucky out here that we get the, the PUP um, which is, you know, a support to them because obviously their expenditure wouldn't be. So hopefully they're not too badly off, um, but their jobs are waiting for them. Um, and we're working so hard. And I, I tell them this all the time. We are working our asses off to ensure that the business that they're coming back to is going to be stronger than they ever seen it. We are going to enter the second half of 2021 is going to be our roaring 20s. And I believe that's going to be for everybody. I think we're going to want to dress beautifully again. We're going to want to get on our makeup. We're going to want to hug and be with people. And it's just going to be the most amazing time, honestly, in our lifetime. Um, and I think that take this pause that you've got and, and use it wisely because you're going to look back in this time and thank God, I, you know, I got that pause in my life where I could, you know, really read me and be with my family and take it as a good, don't take it as a bad, you know, and wake up every morning and be so grateful for every single thing that we've got. And, you know, we are still breathing. There's so many people around us that have not got COVID. Obviously, sadly, yes. And our hearts go out to the people that have and have lost people and, um, you know, people people know that McAhonies, we we feel for our customers and we feel everything that they feel. Um, but the best thing that we do, we're armed with the tools that we have is making sure that the one place that they love, which is coming into us, that we have all the staff back that they love and to make sure that we are giving them an exciting um, experience in store and online. And we have just that it's just that, that we're all going to go through these roaring 20s again. And it is the roaring 20s because obviously we're 20. He's a legend. I mean, Mr. Magan is a legend to come out with us. Um, so I love yeah, it. I, I hope have... he doesn't mind that I'm going to steal that. Oh, my God. That's yes, like the best yes. thing ever. Absolutely. I think the more people take that on board, the better. It is the best line I've heard this year and last year. So you take it and share it and everybody can take it. Yeah. Um, but remember where you heard it first, Mr. <laughs> but will. um he, you know, so the, the great times are ahead of us and just rest, pause and get ready because it's going to be fab. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. And you know, if um, people are listening and they have a never been to McElhenney's or heard of McElhenney's, if they've been living under a rock for the past 50 years, <laughs> um, listening to this podcast would definitely make you think, oh my God, I want to get so dressed up and go to this place. Where is this place? So that's what um, <laughs> we'd love to see them. Oh my God. Like I know like the McElhenney's window displays at Christmas, when you go into the store, like I get everything you're saying, I already know that exists but to anyone that doesn't um, it, it'll encourage you to follow Michael Henney's online and um, you will f- uh, find Michael Henney's on social media isn't it just um, Michael mm-hmm. Henney's on Instagram is there a, a specific so Facebook um, Facebook and Instagram we have both and then you can actually follow all our buyers as well on Instagram so um, they're a little bit quiet at the moment because obviously they're they're not working but they take you on their journey too so they have their own little followers as well so um yeah instagram obviously the demographics are different but um facebook and instagram would be our two biggest um Um, platforms and youtube now as well oh oh right okay we don't have time to talk about that now but i'm definitely coming on again (laughs) you're coming on again to talk about youtube so so and your website is uh dot com dot com okay perfect dot com yes perfect yeah. okay Sandra um thank you so much God this is only my second time doing a podcast but um I never want anybody to feel like uncomfortable coming on because it's just like I'm talking to you without anybody else listening but hopefully there's uh, totally. be people tuning in and you know I'm delighted that people are using this space now to reach out and like there's going to be so many people get inspiration from what you said so I just want to thank you so much and I hope that Michael Hennies is open again soon tell John that we think he is the man because the roaring 20s he are is about the it. legend <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um, yeah it was uh, such a lovely experience talking to 
you tonight and I hope to see you again really soon. I know that sometimes that can be a lot to process. So we have made some show notes for you. If you head over to digmama.com and go to the Dig Podcast page, you will see all of the information there. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on our podcast. Uh, That will mean you'll be kept up to date with all our new guests and also if you want to follow all the drama behind the scenes you can do that on on the social media channels dig mama so yeah have a happy week guys a safe one strange times but i'm just taking it one day at a time and i will see you all on the next podcast